Hey, what's going on, everybody? What's up, Blog World? Hey, this is your boy, Sal, out here, you know, my first show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. What's going on? Hey, Brother Sam? Hey, we out here, you know, uh, the first show. Everybody on the show. Uh, it's called Debate Talk for You. Basically, the introduction to the show, um, just going to let you guys know what the show is all about. I'm going to have a uh, special guest come out here today, two special guests. He's a seven-day Adventist and, you know, very knowledgeable in the word of our brother. Tell me how you did. Can you hear me? I'm going to let you guys know what the show is all about. Yeah, wait for me. Hold on for a second. Just want to make sure the fellas are here. Um, Jamal, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Yeah, brother Jamal is in the house. <laughs> What's going on? And uh, Stanley, brother Stanley, are you are you here? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, that's everybody. You hear me? Yeah, I hear you, I hear you. Uh-huh. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, all right, let's get right into it since everybody's in the house here. So uh, today's show was entitled uh, Saturday or Sunday Worship. That's Saturday or Sunday Worship. You know, um, uh, before we get into that, Brother Stanley, um, let the people know you know, what the whole Seventh-day Adventist, um, you know, situation is about, so people can be familiar with Seventh-day Adventists. Um, so do you want me to explain the entire denomination or just dealing as far as the status is concerned? Yeah, you know, just in a nutshell, you know, break it down, what it is. Well, pretty much, um, Seventh-day Adventist is a movement that began in the, um, the pretty much in the mid-1800s, um, coming from a lot of different false doctrines, that were that out there, and then, you know, a group of young people came together through the power of the Holy Spirit, um, collectively see what the scriptures have to say about particular topics, um, including the, the seven-day Sabbath, and pretty much um, was preaching that word to, to the world. And it's been growing ever since. Right now, it's considered to be one of the fastest growing denominations in the world today. And um, because a lot of people are coming across and understanding pretty much that the Sabbath is the truth, and pretty, pretty much um, the Bible supports it in every different way. So we are truly um, are a movement that is seeking to keep God's word and to preach God's word, um, 100% of it, um, of the word. Um, no, nothing left out, nothing um, added, nothing um, taken away. Everything that's in the word is what we preach, and that's what we. And that's pretty much what I'm going to be standing for tonight. Okay. And uh, Brother Jamal, I know that you, you know, we go to a Pentecostal church, stuff like that. Can you break down what the Pentecostal church is all about? And, you know, just give them a briefing of what is what the Pentecostal church, what they, what they do in the Pentecostal church. Well, the Pentecostal church, you know, we believe we started from, you know, in the book of Acts and the day, when the day of Pentecost, you know. And we basically believe in, you know, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, you know, we believe in, you know, the book of, you know, the whole Bible, you know, and um, we we also keep the Sabbath and and stuff like that, you know. It's 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 more than just one Pentecostal movement though, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of hard for me to you know get into what everybody else does because, right. you know, everybody else does you know different things, you know. Okay. Okay. All right, definitely, definitely. All right, well, the first question is going to go to my brother Stan. What's up, brother? <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm blessed, brother. I'm blessed. All right, the first question goes to you. Here's the question. Um, how can we know which day of the week is the Sabbath day? How can we truly know that? You know, a lot of people have that question. You know, some people feel like they could go to church any day of the week, and, and, you know, it's okay. Like, how can we know which day is the Sabbath day? Well, um, well, before I answer that question directly, um, I wanted to just focus on the last part of your question. Um, 
like you mentioned, that some people can believe that he can go to church any day. And believe it or not, I believe you can go to church every day. Um, I believe there's nothing more going to church every single day of the week. Um, so going to church is not the focus right now. The focus is right now is the keeping of the Sabbath day, not necessarily going to church. It's a little bit more than going to church because even when I leave church, I'm still keeping the Sabbath. You know, I have to okay. keep the Sabbath whether I'm at home, whether I'm in the street, or whether I'm at mm. church. So, so, it's, right, it's, so right. it's more than going to church. So now, mm-hmm. which day is the Sabbath day? Um, well, pretty much it's a universal. It's a, everybody pretty much are mostly in agreement with whether they realize it or not when it comes to which day is what day of the week. Um, you look in the dictionary. You look in the encyclopedia. You um, pretty much go to any different page. Um, it is always commonly known that the first day of the week is always Sunday. It is considered to be, by, by a lot of Christians, as the Resurrection Day. Um, because it is, uh, is, is because Christ resurrected on Easter Sunday. But the word Sunday is not in the Bible, so they use the word He resurrected on the first day of the week. So if the first day of the week is Sunday, then, then the seventh day of the week is the Sabbath. According to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 to 11, we're dealing with the, um, the fourth commandment, which pretty much says that the Sabbath is the seventh day. And the seventh day is the, I'm sorry, it's the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. So pretty much, so that's the, that's the focus that we have to focus on, that um, the seventh day is the Sabbath, which is what we commonly see as from Friday night to Saturday day. Right. Right. Okay. Uh, Brother Jamal, um, hearing, did you hear his breakdown? Did you hear his breakdown? Yeah, we, yeah, you got it. From Friday, right, from uh, Friday to Saturday. Okay, okay, okay. That's, that's right, so, so what's going on with the uh, you know uh, people you know worshiping on Sunday? Do you feel like the Sunday worship is okay, Brother Jamal? Well, I I believe you know I believe the word you know, right. and I mean it it didn't really say that you know that we couldn't worship on Sunday. But Constantine changed all of that. That's where that's where Sunday worship actually came from, you know. When Constantine and then, and you know, I know there's a bunch of argument, you know, going on about him, you know, because right. some people say that he was saved and some people say that he wasn't saved. Right. You know, right. but the fact the fact is that, you know, I I follow, you know, according to how the Jews worship, you know, and anything outside of that. You know, is is extra. You know. Oh yeah. Okay. So really, oh, yeah. you know, really, you know, it's like, you know, when it says that for us to remember the Sabbath day and to keep it holy, you know, that means that, you know, there wasn't to be any kind of work, you know, being done on that day, you know. And I don't consider worship, you know, work. You know, I don't mm-hmm. consider going to church on Sunday, you know, work. Okay. You know. Okay. What do you say to that, Brother Stan? What do you say to that? I'm kind of confused on the last part of the statement. Um, can you can you please clarify your point in the last part for me, please, Brother Jamal? Sorry. Say that again. Can you clarify your last point for me about the work and the church? I'm, I'm kind of confusing that with your, your last statement. Can you can you clarify, please? Well, basically, all I'm saying is that there's a you know work. You know, church, to me, serving God, you know, is not work. You know, work is like uh, me sweeping the floor, you know, me carrying, uh, going to the grocery store and, and, and you know, uh, the laundromat, you know, those kind of things, you know. So are you, are you are you saying that we should be doing those things on the Sabbath? No, those on on the Sabbath day because it's it was it's really the Sabbath is really called Sabbath rest. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and we get that from when God created. You know, after He finished, you know, He rested. You know, so oh, that's exactly. that's one of the reasons why, you know, it was it was meant not to you know do any kind of work on that day. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. You know. And that, so, so pretty much, you and I are in agreement. Then, do you? Yeah. I mean, at least, it yeah. sort of seems to me that do you believe that the seventh day Sabbath is the Sabbath day of the Lord? Yes. 
Oh, well, praise God. Well, praise God for that. Um, all right. So, um, okay, so mm-hmm. we're in agreement. <laughs> we're in agreement. So, now, I mean, I, 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 that's exactly what I'm preaching to. The, uh, that's what, exactly what I'm preaching to the world right now. Yeah, because, because a lot of um, what? How do you feel about um, all these different, you know, denominations? Um, and just like he's mentioning Constantine, how he made the change. Um, and do you feel that the churches should be going back to keeping the Sabbath that the scriptures tell us to keep? Because I know, yeah. Brother Jamal, that you go to church on Sundays as well. Sometimes, you know, you know, a lot of Sundays you go to church too. So, you know, could you like elaborate on that? Explain. Yeah, I, b- I believe you know that that the church really should go back to, you know, go back to doing it on Saturday. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, like well, Friday into Saturday, and I still. You know, I still keep the Sabbath, you know, uh-huh. from Friday Friday into Saturday, you know. Mm-hmm. 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 And, I mean, brothers? there's a lot of ministries that, that, you know, they do they do Sunday worship, you know, in the morning, you know, and in the evening they don't do anything, you know. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, you know, that's them, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I know a lot of people that actually try to play safe and go to church on Saturday and Sunday, you know, as like a safe haven, you know. Well, you know, they're not sure, or they might they might feel like you know, if I go Saturday and Sunday, you know, I'm I'm, I'm still honoring the Sabbath. What do you um, do you believe, Brother Stanley? Do you believe like uh, Sunday you're supposed to go to church even though you know Saturday is the Sabbath day, or you know, what's your what's your opinion? Well, on yeah. That? I, I, well, it is again. It is beyond church, but let's not. Yeah. Let's, uh, of course, of beyond course, church. The scriptures right. say. The, the scriptures does say that mm-hmm. um, that it, in Leviticus that the people have to have a holy convocation on the Sabbath day. Or right. what does it mean? To, what does it mean to have a convocation? A convocation is an assembly. Is an, is a, a convoking, a, a, a gathering of people on the Sabbath. So this is so. It's not something that you just only do at home. This is something that you have to do with other Sabbath keeping believers. You know That's what I mean? Right. So, so there are those that want to, you know, if you want to go to church on Saturday and then and then convoke with your Sabbath um, believers, and then you also want to go to your uh, to Sunday churches and and have fun, you know, and do that. But it, it has to be. But it has to be really clear. But me personally, I wouldn't do it because I want I want to um, at least. Emphasize the point mm-hmm. to my fellow to my fellow Christians that this day is not the Sabbath day. The Sunday is not the Sabbath day. This is um, a traditional day, but we all should be going back, like Brother Jamal just said. We all should be going back to keeping Sabbath. The entire church. And I don't want them to think that I'm supporting this idea. That right. um, you know, the people say, oh, we, you know, they try to use the idea that, oh, we're no longer under the law, we're under grace now, so we can go to any day we want, blah, blah, blah. Oh, no, 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 that is unscriptural. The yeah, scriptures yeah. <laughs> are very clear. The, the, um, when, in that sense, when we, the scripture says that we are not no longer under the law, it's, it, it, it's, not foc- it's focusing under the penalty of the law. I'm talking about that the idea that you don't have to get stoned if you break the law. Now we're under grace. I look at grace as a sense where when I think of a credit card, it, sometimes I'm behind in my credit. But, um, but even if I'm a day late, you know, there's a period called a grace period. That's what they call it. They call it a grace period. In other words, you're not going to be penalized, penalized for paying a day or two late. They'll give you a time period. Well, Jesus has given us a time period as well. And that That's time right. period is, um, that time period is up to judgment day. So we have time. To repent, we have time to reflect. We have time for that. I used to be a Pentecostal. I was a Pentecostal mm-hmm. for five years. I used to go to Temple Royale Pentecostal in Pitkin Avenue, Brooklyn. So I, so I was, I was, um, I used to be a part of the choir. I was, I was really part of the Pentecostal movement. So you know, I, I, so I've, I've been a Pentecostal, and, and I know how their mindsets are as far as the Sunday keeping is concerned. So. Um, and um, so I always try to, like, make sure that they understand, you know, that um, the Sunday keeping is a tradition that we should break out of man's tradition if we claim to be Bible-believing Christians. Now, yeah. if you don't, now, if you don't, if, now, if you're not a Bible-believing Christian, okay, I can't tell you how to do it. You know what I'm saying? I can, all I can do is tell you, hey, keep the pre- why don't you just follow the Bible? But if you right. want to be a Bible-believing Christian, 
we got to, um, I really believe there's going to be many people in heaven, but all those people that are going to make it in heaven are going to have a fat bone. They're all going to have a fat bone and strength because they're going to show, they're going to show people that they stood for what's right. Like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When it came time for, to, for them to play the music and bow down before that idol, they didn't act like they were tying, and, uh, tying up their shoelaces or something. They, they, they stood up to let them know, no, we ain't bending down for you. But yeah. that's exactly what, that's how, that's how I stand for, not just the Sabbath, for all God's commandments. Every single one of them are equally important. So I, I, I pretty much emphasize that rule. I don't want, I don't want to um, kind of play to the side, you know, I, I'm against adultery, but, you know, I, I, I'll watch, a, you know, adulterous movies, and mm-hmm. I, I'm against mm-hmm. murder, but, you know, I'll I watch a couple mm-hmm. of James Bond, you know. No, no, no. I'll play with guns. I'll play with toy guns. No. When you have to stand up and be, have a backbone, you know what I mean? To show them, no, I'm keeping the Sabbath. I am, I'm keeping all of God's precepts and commandments and laws. And, you know, and, and I really believe that's, that's the way, at least to, today, in these last days especially, how the Christians should stand strong for God's word. That's, what, that's my call. Uh, uh, can I say something? I just want to ask a question. Go ahead, Pastor. Because um, I'm not... You know, I'm not too familiar with with the Seventh Day Adventist movement. You know, but um, uh, my my wife, which is uh, Brother Sal's sister, has a uh, a young lady at the job. Now, this young lady, she goes out and she does all kinds of, of partying and and you know what have you. And you know, when my wife says something to her, she says that she can get away with that because she hasn't been baptized yet. You know what? Mm. What does that mean? So you talking about a seven day Adventist? That's a seven day Adventist person that's doing that. Yes, and that's well, that's, what, that's what she said. She says well, she can do all of here, that because she hasn't been baptized yet. Well, this is this is the case here. Um, I, I think this issue that we're discussing here is not a seven day Adventist issue. Actually, it's a Christianity issue. Um, there are Christians that are doing exactly the same thing in other days as well. Um, so when those, when people haven't been baptized by Jesus Christ, by his word, by his blood, by the power of the Holy Spirit, by water, um, as he requests or requires, um, they are Satan. So if they are Satan, um, Satan got control of them. They're going to do, they're going to do everything the God of this world is going to want them to do. You know what I mean? So, um, this is not a Seventh day Adventist or Baptist or a Pentecostal or a, a Lutheran thing. This is a Christian thing. And that, that's, at least that's what I call it. That's what I see. I don't know. You don't see like you see at that point. No, there's a there's you know in each one there's a different terminology that that they use. You know, like uh, if you ask a Pentecostal or somebody who's been around Pentecostals, they'll tell you, "Well, I'm not saved." You know, but she 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 said that the reason why she can do whatever she wants to do, she said she's a Seventh Day Adventist and she can do what she wants to do because she hasn't been baptized. Pretty much saying the same thing. She ain't saved. That's what she's saying. Mm-hmm. Well, she, she goes. She goes. She goes. She goes to church. She goes to the, you know, mm-hmm. she goes to church on Saturday, and she's, you know, mm-hmm. adamant about her going to church on Saturday and all of that. But, mm-hmm. you know, when it comes to, you know, the doing the right thing, you know, mm-hmm. when my wife says something to her, she says she mm-hmm. can do whatever she wants to do because she hasn't been baptized. Mm-hmm. You know. But again, pretty much, she's pretty much saying. Without her realizing it, she's saying she ain't saved. You can go to church and not be saved. Church don't make yeah. you saved. It is, it is the blood of Jesus Christ that makes you saved. So, um, so if a Baptist, or you know, and I see a Baptist doing the same thing, and he told me he's not saved or he's not filled with the Holy Ghost or something like that, and yet he still goes to a Baptist church. Um, I don't care what church he goes to. The point is, you don't got yourself delivered from sin. You have to be delivered. From the from the power of sin, even Satan himself lives in the church. He still goes to church before a lot of Christians get there on time. So, um, um, so being, I guess it's not the church that makes you holy. You know what I'm saying? Because Satan is still the devil. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But rather, mm-hmm. it is the power of God. It's the power of God that makes you changes the life. And she's pretty much showing by her dancing around and partying and stuff like that. She's proven that she is that she doesn't have the power of Christ within her. And, and pretty much she's not a good example of the Seventh-day Adventist church, but rather she's a good example of somebody that's not saved in the Christian church. So, Brother Jamal, so actually we're in agreement in a way with the Sabbath day and stuff uh, uh, about Saturday, you know, being the Sabbath day. Is that correct, Brother Jamal? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So we're going to go on to the next topic then, since that's clear. <laughs> uh, now, I know that, um, the you know, the seven day events is, uh, you know, they believe in the Holy Spirit and stuff like that. Um, you know, but the, um, Brother Jamal, could you, like, elaborate on what the Holy Spirit, you know, how do you know, well, how do you know if you have the Holy Spirit? Well, you know, yeah. you know, yeah, I hear you. You know, you have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit comes with impressions, mm-hmm. and uh, to a certain degree, with 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 the Pentecostal Church, you know, uh, the Holy Spirit was 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 it came in. He he introduced himself as as a spirit, and he fell upon him in the form of fire. Okay, you know. And some spoke in, in, in tongues as as the Spirit gave utterance. And, you know, there was other different manifestations of, you know, the Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, there's emanations. You know, I mean, uh, when the Holy Spirit comes upon some people, they feel different things. You know, mm-hmm. some feel water, some feel fire. You know, some feel wind, which is, you know, all types of manifestations of the Holy Spirit, as according to the Word. Yeah, because I know, brother, you know, you know, I've been to the Sunday churches and stuff, and, you know, you know, I love the pastors and everything, and, you know, I see the people speaking in tongues and, you know, stuff like that, you know. Now, I know, you know, some Adventist brothers, you know, got some issues with that, <laughs> the speaking in tongues and stuff like that. Uh, brother Stan, um... Um, what do you feel about that, you know, speaking in tongues, the issue of speaking in tongues, and that's being evidence of having, you know, the Holy Spirit and stuff like that? Oh, I highly, highly, highly disagree with that idea. Um, at least, the, um, I only agree with it as far as the way the scriptures portray it. But the, what's happening in the churches today is a grave misunderstanding of what the scriptures clearly teach. Um, the, the the tongues, the ter- the word tongues, it, it sometimes can get a little funny. That sometimes when you use the word tongues, because all the tongues are it just means it's another word for languages. You know, when you, when you ask somebody, hey, do you speak in tongues? Um, you, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? I, I ran into a lady one time. She told me, hey, brother, you saved? I said, I'm saved. Yes, it's by the blood of Christ. Amen. She goes, do you speak in tongues? I said, I speak English and I speak Creole. So, uh, yes, I do. Uh, okay. <laughs> yes, okay. I do speak in tongues. I speak in two of them. No, no, what I'm asking you really is, do you, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? So, you see, it's not that you, should, they don't want you speaking in a language that's understood. They want you to speak a language that's not understood in order for you to be filled with the Holy Ghost. But the Scriptures don't teach this. That's not what the well, Scriptures if teach. If you look in the book of Acts, it does, it does speak about that. Not not unknown tongues. It not says tongues. likewise. It tells us that this that this spirit will give you an utterance. Mm-hmm. Now, an utterance is not something you know. And, and when the Holy Spirit comes, he does he 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 manifests himself, mm-hmm. you know, and he gives you a, a yes. There is a there is a language that's called glossolalia. Mm-hmm. And that is not English. That is not an interpreted language that you know humans speak. You understand? Okay, let me let me um let me um address that. What does it mean to utter? What is another word for utter? It doesn't mean noise. You can say grow. It means to speak. Okay. It means to speak. That's what yeah, means. Well well I mean that's what they're saying, speaking in speaking in tongues. Okay, uttering so let's, let's in focus tongues, on that. Which, you know, whichever so that, one you want to use. Great. So let's but let's focus on that word. It means to speak. Okay? So this is very inter it's very interesting. Because according to the concept of Acts two that you mentioned that where it mentioned that he gave them utterance. What utterance did he give them? Did the Bible explain exactly. what, what utterance? utterance? If, if they already spoke English. No, no, no. It and, they all, and, they, and they already spoke they you know, some spoke Greek, some spoke Hebrew. The, the, the beautiful about the beautiful thing about that is it was a human language. Do you agree with that? Mm. Yeah, you can say that. Of course it was. 
Um, the scripture said that the people understood the language, and they started listing the names of it's the languages that, that were yeah, spoken. This is not something they note, go, note who was, was Note who was there. Again? Note who was there. The listeners were there. The believers were there. The Jews were yeah, there. There was believers. There, there were some Jews and there were some Galileans, mm-hmm. which is a different sect of, of you know, Judaism. And there were some uh, outsiders that was also there. And they and they were they marvelled. Why why would why would you marvel at something that's that's common? No no no. They marvel because it was like in other words, I would be marvel if you never spoke Chinese in your life and you started speaking Chinese and a Chinese person understood every word, that Chinese version would be extremely marvel. You will be marvel. Why? Because you never learned that tongue before. So this is not a, so even if it's, even if the tongue is common to the Chinese person, it's uncommon to your lips. So you shouldn't be speaking Chinese words. So exactly. um, that's, no, that's, that's the point. The point is that every time the language was spoken, there was always someone there to understand. So so that the point is the point is um, every the language that was going on today in these churches. It's, it's, it's tongues that people that are there don't even understand. So, Brother Stanley, that is not, so you, that is not so, scriptural. So, Brother Stanley, so you saying that in today's Romans, world today, Romans eight and twenty six. Mm-hmm. Let, let, let's go to Romans eight and twenty six. Let's go there. Yeah, let's turn to that. Turn to the to, to the Romans slide. eight and twenty six. I'm gonna read it aloud for the listeners that are listening in the radio. Okay. Mhm. Mm-hmm. And the radio, and it says here. Likewise, the Spirit, meaning the Holy Spirit, also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Okay. What do you make from that, from Pastor? Well, the, the, the Holy Spirit gives you has is a particular language that is given. Is that and, what that means? And that's what to me this is what this means. Likewise, the Spirit, when you don't know mm-hmm. how to pray, in other words, when you're mm-hmm. English or you're mm-hmm. French or whatever mm-hmm. language it is that you speak mm-hmm. from from this side of of heaven, you know, mm-hmm. when you don't know how to pray properly, mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. Spirit gives you an utterance. And then when, it says that it, when you have, it, it, when you it have, is not there, though. I hope you notice that. Hmm? It says the spirit. It said the spirit itself. Make notice, it notice, interest. notice. If if you're looking at the right Bible, it's in capital letters, right? What's that? What's that? The spirit. The word spirit. The word spirit. Yes, it's the Holy and, Spirit. And the Holy spirit. exactly, that means that that that's the Holy Spirit that's that's allowing and you know making these things happen. Okay, let let me let me look at it. Let me look at it. And, and this is the way I see it. Maybe I'm wrong. Before, before you do I that, go, go on to 26. No, I'm going to read 26. I'm reading 26 for you. I'm going mean, to look at I mean, 26. I mean 27, excuse me. Oh, go, go on to 27. 27. Okay. And he, the Holy Spirit, that searches the heart, knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so let me let me look at 26 again, and this is what I got from that, okay? All right, it says here, Likewise, the Holy Spirit also helpeth our infirmities or weaknesses, for we know not or don't know what we should pray for as we should or as we ought. But the Holy Spirit itself makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered, which cannot be uttered. And I, I want to emphasize which cannot be uttered. What does cannot be uttered mean? What does cannot be uttered mean? It means that you are unable to speak. You don't know how to speak. You can't speak. So this doesn't support this thing that's happening in these churches this day. In fact, it goes against it because 
No, it, no, it actually does. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. According to the scripture here, the Holy Spirit is making intercession with groaning, which cannot be uttered. But what, what I'm getting from this, when people take this scripture all the time, they make it as if it's saying, which can be uttered. No, no, you can't utter it. You should not be uttering a thing. When the groanings are happening, it is an, an eternal groaning. Jesus also groaned within himself, the Bible says. So that groaning didn't make him go, shun the life, oh, whatever, go, go, shah, whatever they say. They, they, they wasn't, Jesus was not doing that. You can be careful. Oh, I, I, I'm, uh, very careful I'm very careful. Uh, because I know, I know that um, the devil also speaks in tongues. That's yeah, what I know. So for, us, so for us, he counterfeits everything that God does. Well, that's my point. So then if you have a person that can give you the same evidence, in other words, if, if, um, if somebody say, hey, look, the murder was the murderer in the room had on a red shirt, right? You want evidence to prove that. So then you, feel, you find the person that had a red shirt, yep, you got the evidence. That's the person right there. But what if somebody can discredit, how can they easily discredit that evidence? You know how they can do it? By showing someone else, other people that wore red shirts at that same time. Then that, that cancels out it, that cancels out of being the evidence now. Because now others have the same thing. The, 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 um, the, the, the devil went into the serpent and spoke his tongue. The devil went into, um, into many people that were possessed, and he spoke the language he spoke. So, and, and they were all filled with spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. So then, at what, how do we detect what is the Holy Spirit and what is the demonic spirit if they are both speaking tongues in both the others? The Bible never used the word that, that, that to say that the whole the people with the Holy Spirit, you, um, the evidence of it is tongues. The Bible never said that. The churches say that. Not the Bible. The Bible, Jesus, in fact, told you what the evidence is. He says that you shall know them by their fruit. The fruit. And then the, the, the Bible tells you in Galatians chapter, um, chapter 5, 22 and 23 what the fruits are, the, the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit is. What is it? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. These are the things that are the evidence of the Holy Spirit. So if a person is speaking and comes and they're committing adultery, well, they have the Holy Spirit now while they're committing adultery? No, I'm not buying into that. I'm not buying into that. Um, um, the, the evidence of the Holy Spirit are the fruits of the Spirit, not the gifts of the Spirit. That is, that is definitely a great misunderstanding of the Scripture, and that's one of them. Hacking How, operate. How is it possible to operate the gifts if you don't have the fruit? Say again? How is it possible to operate the gifts if you don't have the fruit? Ooh, easily. Um, Jesus said that many people are going to come to say to me in Matthew, this is Matthew chapter 7, Lord, Lord, haven't we done all these miraculous gifts in your name? Haven't we done all? And what he's going to say to them, I never knew you. I'm going to tell you why he said that. Because you shall know them by their fruits. Will the devil work miracles? Will the priest that works for the devil work miracles? Was um, um, in the days of Moses. Even the, um, the, the witches there, that was there, they were able to turn serpents into, their staff into serpents as well. But they, the devils can work miracles. The scripture says that. They're miracles of devils. So you see, the devil can work miracles as well. So miraculous things are not the evidence. It's not the gift that's the evidence. It's the fruit of the Spirit, which the devil cannot attain. The devil does not have the Holy Spirit, so he cannot show love. He can try to act like he's showing love, but he could never show love. He could never show patience. He could never show... No, the devil does not have the fruit of the Spirit, but he can definitely display the gift. But well, doesn't it say something in the Bible about, uh, you know, there's going to be many gifts given to us, uh, the gift of teaching, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, speaking in, is it speaking in tongues, a part of those gifts that's going to be yes. given to us? Yes. Okay. And it's understood language. Understood language. If I'm preaching a word to you, um, Sal, and you don't speak English, me telling you the, the message in English won't mean a thing to you. It is like babbling to you. It won't mean a thing. It won't give you edification, not one bit. Okay? But, but, but if I preach to you in a language you understood, it will be a blessing unto you. You'll understand it. You'll know what to do on Monday, what to do on Tuesday. You'll know what to, how to avoid certain situations. Why? Because you have the power and the wisdom of God. That's the reason why the Bible had to be translated, because the people spoke different tongues. 
And the gift of translation or interpretation is also one of the gifts as well. That's a gift too, to know how to interpret, John. So, um, so it's not uh, for, the, for, the, for the, um, the churches these days to teach that you, I could just say all these different rhetorics and not mean a thing. The person that's speaking it don't understand it. The person that's listening to it doesn't understand it, but they got church. They have in church. They go with the Holy Spirit. You know, you got to be sitting. This is what I'm looking at. The Bible never teaches this stuff. You will never find that nowhere from, from cover to cover. That's not biblical. That is tradition, and that is false interpretation based on tradition, based on false interpretation. So basically, basically because um, I'm going to tell you, I, I hang out around around a lot of Jews, and I hang out around, you know, Hebrew Israelites, and Hebrew Israelites that I know speak in tongues. And these are these are these are hardcore Israelites. They speak a language, and and they'll let you know that there is a language that is a communication between you and God. There's a communication between you and God. What, is, what does it say that in the Bible? Are you talking about First Corinthians fourteen? Yeah, Let's go to First Corinthians fourteen. Go ahead. First Corinthians fourteen. Let's look at that. That's another great misunderstanding of the scripture. Because yeah, a lot of brothers actually say that they do say it's the language between you and God. Uh huh. You know, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna show you the verse that makes them say that. I'm gonna show you the verse. Mm-hmm. Look ahead, Sal. Okay. Yeah, you should know, A lot of brothers I talk to about speaking in tongues. They actually say, you know, though they agree with the interpretation um, doctrines in the Bible, they mm-hmm. also say that it's a communication between them and God. And you know, God, a special yeah. kind of language that they speak. You know that God, you know, understands and whatnot. As a matter of fact, they even say that they understand what they're saying when they're speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Now that it's, it's, it's only when you understand. This is, we're we're going to read it. Let's look at verse chapter fourteen. Verse one. Remember, you, you Bible students should know what First Corinthians chapter thirteen was all about. First Corinthians chapter thirteen is always quoted in wedding. Is the is the chapter about love or charity? In the King James Version, they use the word charity. Um, in other versions, they use the word love. And then he continued from that point. Listen to this carefully. He says, follow after charity. In other words, follow after love. He's continuing from that point. And desire spiritual gifts. Right? But rather that ye may prophesy. So Paul would rather that one prophesy. Now, prophesy in the context of the Greek meant to preach God's word. Verse 2 says, For he that speaketh in an now. It says unknown tongue. Are you seeing that here? Now, I don't know if you notice it, but that word unknown there is in italic. Do you notice that? Okay. Do you know what it means when the Bible writes words in italic? What does that mean? It means it means in the original text of the Greek language that word was not there. This okay. was injected injected in there by the translators later, many, 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 many years later. So they but they purposely put that there just to let you know this is not divinely inspired. It was their own sin. On and their understanding of it. So, if you want to use it, go ahead and use it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. But they let you know it ain't holy. That word unknown there is not divinely inspired. Okay? This is not written by Paul. Okay, here you go. It says, For he that speaketh in a tongue or language speaketh not unto men, but unto what? God. What Bible are you reading from? The King James Version. And you're reading 1 Corinthians what? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I just read verse 1 and the verse 2. I'm in verse 2 now. Go, go, uh, chapter 13. Chapter 13. 1 Corinthians. Uh, well, uh, let, okay. me, let me read my version. My version says, Though I speak with the languages of men and of Malachim, but have not love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Okay. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all deep secrets and all knowledge, mm-hmm. and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains but have not love, 
I am nothing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, to me, basically, that's letting, you know, like I said, look at, you know, verse 1 is saying, though I speak with the languages of men and of, of you know, Malachim, which, which are the angels, but have not mm-hmm. love. So there mm-hmm. is a language which we speak or that we have that we have been given, you know, and 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 this is Paul, you know. Yes. The, yes. The, you know the one everybody accredits to, you know, writing the majority of the Bible, you know. Yes. yes. And he's saying the you know, he Testament, speaks the with the tongues of of men and of angels. What is the angelic tongue? If 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 he if Paul has it to speak with, mm-hmm. and what is the tongue of men? Well, the tongue of men is like I said, languages. Mm-hmm. You understand. Well, but well, speaking in tongues is something completely that. different from that. That's the you know that's where he says he also speaks with the tongue of the Malachim. Mm-hmm. I have a response if you wait. If you wait. Yeah. Is that it? Okay. Yeah, you respond. Mm-hmm. The word, the very first word that you have there is though, right? Mm-hmm. Now, though has two different meanings. The word though can mean although which is how you're reading it right now. You're saying although, as if Paul has something. Although means, since I have this, although I have this, therefore, okay? That's how it's being interpreted right now as he's saying it. But the Greek word that supports that word is not although, but rather if, very important. Is there a difference between if and although? Highly. Paul was being pretty much, he's exaggerating, and he is pretty much letting you know, if I had these things. And this is very important. He's saying, if I speak with tongues of men and of angels. He didn't say he spoke with these things. He said if he did. Yes, he did. Huh? <laughs> Paul spoke. No, 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 what, what, Paul, what, what, what Paul is saying right here. What Paul is saying right here. This is this is where we differ because where Paul is. Paul was the most learned man. Paul spoke. He let. He was the one that corrected the other apostles, and he let them know that he spoke with more than because Paul spoke more than one language. Paul also had dual citizenship. Which led him yeah. to, you know, he studied in Paul. This is the same Paul that sat at the feet of Gamaliel. Okay. You understand? So okay. he learned, and he he was well learned when it came to languages. Okay. You understand? That's why okay. he was the. That's why he's accredited with, you know, most of these writings because he did a lot of traveling. Okay. So he he and spoke Greek and he spoke Hebrew, mm-hmm. you know, okay. and he also, you know, spoke other languages outside of that. Okay. You know, so right. he's he's letting he's basically I mean it's self-exclamatory, you know, he's telling us you know though I speak with the with the languages of men and of of mm-hmm. angels, mm-hmm. because now, he's he's trying okay. to prove a point, you know, okay. just because just because okay. he has the ability to speak with the tongues of men and the tongues of angels, if he doesn't have any kind of love, you know, all he's doing is making noise. Basically, is what he's saying. Okay. Can I? Can I? Let me. Can I finish with my response now? Can I? Okay. Now, like I was saying, he said if. Now, even with all that information, it doesn't take away from the point. He said if he spoke with the tongues of men and of angels. No, he said though he does. No, no, he I didn't say speak. Does. It says, though, though I see, speak again, with the languages sir, of men and of Malachim, pastor, though I. Pastor, you, you're interpreting the word as if it's saying, although I speak. The word uh, Brother though Jamal, what Bible, what, what Bible are you reading it from? Is it a different, uh, not a King James um, Version? Or? No, I'm reading from, I'm reading from the Holy Scriptures. Okay, okay. Yeah, um, if you, um, I don't know if you guys have a strong concordance. If you look up the Greek word for that word, it is not the way um, Brother Pastor is, the pastor is interpreting it. He's interpreting it as if it's saying, although I speak with the tongues of men, which means I really speak those things. And even if I speak it, it doesn't matter if I don't have love. That's how he's interpreting it. 
Well, that's, 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 not what, that's, that's the way that's he said it. No, I, no, 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 no. This is the way I'm speaking. You're misinterpreting the word though, brother. The word though in this context means if. So that changes the meaning of your, your of what you're, you're interpreting now. That changes. Now, if you can say that, if you can say it again with the word if, you will not get that same view. Even still, it doesn't matter. <laughs> All right, say it. Try it. Let's try even it. Though, try it. E- even, if I, if, even though I speak with the no, languages no, of men, yeah. if I speak with the languages of men and of, of angels, but have not love, it, uh-huh. it's still... It's, it's still does, that, does that mean he speaks it? Does it doesn't mean take nothing it? from it. Yes, it does. Because it doesn't no, it tell doesn't. me that he speaks it. No, it does. Because if I told you, I'm going to give you, I'm gonna give you a, um, a hypothetical. Because that's a hypothetical. I'm going to give you a hypothetical. A hypo, um, if I told you, if I flew like Superman all the way around the world and come back, and I don't have love, that don't mean nothing. So does that mean that I can fly around the world? But if I told you, although... Brother. I just fly around brother. the world. Brother, I'm, I'm, really, so, I'm sorry, brother. Let me finish my point. My point. <laughs> if, I told you, if I told you, although I fly all the way around the world, what am I saying now? I'm telling you I do that. So there's a difference between a hypothetical and a reality. Now, I can confirm that if you read verse 2. Verse 2 confirms that point. It says here, and though, which that though also means if. Pretty much saying, and if I have the gift of prophecy and understand, listen, all mysteries. Does Paul understand all mysteries? No. And and understand, um, I'm sorry, and all knowledge. Does Paul have all knowledge? Only God has all knowledge. So you see he's being hypothetical here. He's not telling you something that he has. He's telling you something that even if he was exaggeratedly, exaggeratedly, even if he had those things, it wouldn't mean nothing without love. To show you the importance of love, but don't don't take the word "go" as if it means "although." That's a mis- that's a grave misinterpretation there. That, that's a so, word so, if. Yeah. So, brother Stanley, so let me ask you a question. So, you so today you don't believe anyone today in today's world is actually. Um, God is uh, using them to speak tongues in, the, in today's no, I world? Believe, I believe in the gift of tongues. I believe in the gift of tongues, but the genuine gift of tongues, not what they're doing today. Today is false tongues being preached today. That's false so no, tongues. So, so nobody today that's speaking in tongues is of God, you, you're saying, or, you know, it's no, 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 uh, something tongues, else. False tongues, false tongues. But, but remember, okay, I'm, I don't judge, I'm not judging the heart. I'm not okay. judging the heart. I'm only judging the. I'm only judging the fruit. That's all I'm judging. If um, okay. um if a, a person, a person is um, eventually when you start when you do it enough, you tend to believe you're doing it now. You get to that point, and then even I could even get to the even I could even go a little bit further. Even Satan himself can make you see that. I mean, think about it. You can't even hear nothing. There's no miracle coming from that. The person is speaking that, how in the world could you confirm that that person has the Holy Spirit by listening to gibberish? I can do it without me thinking. So if I can do it without thought, I can't do it. If you ask me to speak Chinese, I won't do it for you. If you ask me to speak Chinese, if you ask me to speak Russian, if you ask me to speak German, I can't do it for you, not even playingly. I can play around all I want, but I can guarantee you I can mimic that, that, that gibberish that's been going on around the church. I can mimic that. It doesn't take much to mimic that. When you go to those voodoo seances, what do you hear them saying? The same exact chant. The same exact mm. chant. The well, same right. demons, the same right. demons that be ruling those right, hold voodoo on, hold seances. On. Let me, the same one that be ruling Stanley. the churches. Brother Stanley, hold on. Yeah. Let me give uh, let me give Jamal the floor for a bit. You know, let him get his uh, time so he can like. Make oh, it not clear. a problem. Not a problem. Yeah, go ahead, brother Jamal. Make you know. That, 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 you know that it's so funny. You know because of the fact. You know, Jesus got on the Pharisees and the Sadducees because they knew so much but didn't know nothing. Because he walked through the volume of the book, and yet when he stepped on his team, they didn't even know who he was. They didn't even recognize him as being the Messiah, you know. And for years, you know, people get educated and lose focus on, on the truth. Jesus said that unless you come as a little child. Now, we know that little children don't know a lot. 
you know. Mm-hmm. They know, you know, what mommy or daddy teaches them and, you know, somewhat of what they pick up along the way. So what is it that Jesus was saying, you know, that he, you know, made mockery of the Pharisees and Sadducees, as, you know, as many times as he could, you know, because they knew everything but didn't know nothing, you know. And we have to be careful not to get in those kind of positions, you know, spiritually as well as mentally and emotionally because, you know, we're not really, we don't become any use to other people to win them over to Christ as well as, you know, compelling them to do kingdom work, you know. Now, like I said, I I sit with, with, with people that have been in Jerusalem, you know, my pastor now. You know, he 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 learned in Jerusalem. You know, he studied, you know, Hebrew, he studied Greek, you know. And we often sit down and we conversate and debate, you know, about the word. And I learned a lot from him, you know, which as well as I go back to the word and I, you know, I read up through the word. And I'm like, you know, if how is it possible for God to hear your prayers without your prayers being hindered, you know. Hebrew, Greek, whatever the language is that is, that is given to us, you know, which which is given to us, it's a gift. It's not, you know, the gift of tongues as well as, you know, uh, the language of tongues. It's two different things. The language of tongues, yeah, that's that's the tongues of men, like I, like I was saying. And the Malachim, those are the, you know, those are angels, you know. Now, if, if if it wasn't possible to have the tongue of angels, it wouldn't be in here in Scripture, you know. Now, depending on people, because, I mean, there's some, yeah, there's some crazy people in, in everything, you know. I'm quite sure you have some crazy Seventh-day Adventists, you know, that come to church and, you know, when they stand up and say something, you know that, you know, they're they're not even at the level of being considered unlearned because of the fact of the information that they don't have, you know. But we can't, you know, sit here and, 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 and like I said, throw everything out because that's what the devil wants, you know. Now, if he exists, you know, and he has a language, yes, then God has given us one too, which, you know, it speaks about that in the book of Acts because that's where all of this, all of this was, you know, was was coming from the book of Acts, you know. What is that? The book of the actions of the apostles, you know, what they did after Jesus commissioned them, you know. He told them to go up in the upper room, and he went up there, you know, and he told them that they would receive something, you know, and they received something, you know. Some, some of course, there's, there's an interpretation, and there's an interpreter, you know, but being that, you know, there's all there's all this confusion going on about this one particular gift, you know. Nobody's trying to interpret. You know? You understand? I, understand. I, I can I can talk about something and, and it being so negative that the person that has it negate, negates to use it because they're like, I don't want to hear what nobody's saying because, you know, like me, where I came from. You know, the ministry that I was given was was of a prophetic origin, you know, and I fasted, I prayed, you know, and I sought the face of face of the Lord, you know. I, I do my 40-day fast when, when he, you know, commissions me, you know, and I came out of the Spirit with something of substance, you understand, and... I believe that, you know, those that have that, you know, there's a lot of people that have fear of speaking in tongues because, and I had that fear because I heard the same thing, you know, oh, well, you know, he's speaking in a language, that's that's the devil, you know, and you know what happened? I stopped. I stopped, I, well, I tried to stop. I tried to stop for a whole, a whole three months, and the fourth month came, and I went to pray in English, and I could not pray in English whatsoever. It, it something just busted out of my belly, and I found myself 
speaking in a language that was unknowledgeable to me. But I knew that in the midst of that, I wasn't there by myself. Now, in my spiritual sense, I know the difference between evil and I know the difference between holy. You understand? Because the holy presence of God causes you, you know, to bow down in worship when the other presence causes you to fear. You understand? And I found myself, you know, I could not, for a whole day, I couldn't speak any English. So I stayed in the house because I realized that I wouldn't be profitable, you know, to anybody coming outside, you know, trying to go to the store and, and you know, out of my mouth, you know, comes this language. Mm. You know, mm. even now I'm careful with it, but I know that is that it is a gift of the Holy Spirit, you know, because only he can reveal the things that I know about certain situations and circumstances, you know. I know about people that have been to church and got hurt, you know. I know about people's names that I never knew before, but the Spirit brings it to me and, 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 you know, tells me to minister. And that's what I do. You say more or less it's a supernatural experience. Yes, it's a supernatural experience. It's not a natural experience because if it was a natural experience, then man would be able to get the glory from it. You understand? Hi, Brother, Brother Stanley. I'm going to give you a few more minutes before we go into the next topic to rebuttal. Brother Stanley? Yes. yes. All right. Um, I, I definitely um, respect you, Pastor Jamal, um, uh, of your testimony. And um, and a lot of times um, this topic to me can be, like, very passionate because at one time I was a Pentecostal and I was um, also – I also experienced this. Um, thing I remember that I remember the situation how they they placed a hand on my head and they told me to start uttering anything and then um just keep saying it, just keep saying it and then and i and um and I would just but don't say it in English, don't speak your language, don't speak the tongue you know, just just keep uttering, and no matter how funny it sounds, don't worry about it, you know that's the Holy Spirit speaking you know when you hear that and I, and I, and from what I study from the Bible, there's a contradiction and um i I, I just do that, that stuff is not practiced in God's word, and um, and that's the reason why I, I, I'm passionate about. It. I used to defend this faith. I used to, I, I used to teach this this um, topic. Um, I used to be a Bible teacher as well in the Pentecostal church. I used to teach this doctrine, so I know all the scriptures that you you recording, and I know a lot more even to to try to support that that belief. So this stuff is not new to me. This is this is something that I grew so. Yes, we should be as a little child, but being a little child just means to be is to be humble, not to be ignorant. And um, the scriptures, the scriptures are clear on the idea that we ought to be educated in God's word, and um, because that's that's a part of the sanctification process. That's a part of renewing your mind. That's a part of um, being filled. You got um, scripture says He'll teach you. You have to be filled with information so that you can be ready to give an answer for them that ask. So that's, mm-hmm. that's what the scripture tells you. You know what I mean? So, um, mm-hmm. so now, now, I'm reading. I'm reading First um, Corinthians 14. We started it, but we never got to finish it. Um, if we get back into the scriptures on that, and I, I really need time to really break this down because it is it down, so bro. clear. It is so clear. It says here, mm-hmm. Paul is saying here, follow after love, pretty much. You know, remember, because he, mm-hmm. he was emphasizing in chapter 13 to follow after love. He wants us to do these things in love, not selfishness. And in chapter 13, mm-hmm. you would read um, that it's not, it's a, it's, it's a, it's, um, in chapter 5, in verse 5, I mean, in chapter 13, verse 5, it says, Love, or charity, does not behave itself unseemly, and it seeketh not her own. That's very important, because it's saying that it's not selfish. This is not something that is internal. This is not something which is between me and God when I'm speaking another language. This gift of language, this gift of tongues, the gift of God is not for personal use. The gift of God is for peace, this is for the church, it's for the edifying of the church, for the work of the ministry. This is what it says also in um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and in Ephesians. So now, you read here, it says here in chapter 14, verse 1, follow after charity. Don't be selfish with it. This is not for you, only for you. This is for the people, for the church. And this 
desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you prophesy. And he's going to explain to you why he rather you prophesy. Um, he says, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understand him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. This is a negative statement. This is not a positive statement. He's telling you when you're speaking in a tongue, in an unknown tongue, no one's getting you, but only God understands you. If I'm speaking Creole to an English crowd, that's, it does nothing for the people. It does nothing for the church. They're not getting edified by that. Only God understands, which won't do nothing for God. It's going to do it for only the people. So the gift is for the people to be edified. But if I'm only speaking Creole and praying in Creole and no one's getting it, it's meaningless. It's mystery to them. They say, what in the world are we saying? I don't speak that language. That's a negative statement. Verse 3 says, but he... That prophesy means to preach. Preach in their tongue. Prophesy, speak it unto men for edification. You see? He's telling you, but if you speak to the people in something that they understand, you'll be edified. And comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. Remember what it says here in verse 5 in chapter 13? It is a not a selfish gift. It is not for self-edification. This is not a positive statement. He's telling you, if you're edifying yourself, you're being selfish with your gift. You're supposed to be sharing the gift of the church. The gift is not for personal use. It's for the edifying of the church. Okay? And in verse 5, it's a clincher. Verse 5 tells you clearly what, what Paul's mindset is here. He says, I would that you all spake with tongues. Now, this is what language is not. Take this out. But... Rather that ye prophesy, you rather you prophesy than speak another language. Check this out. For greater is he that prophesies than he that speaketh with tongues, except the interpret, that the church may receive edifying. You see, the purpose of the tongue with interpretation and the purpose of prophesying, notice what, the, what, what is equal between the two. They both are understood by the church. That way, the church can be edified. That way, the church will grow. If I speak in Creole and somebody interprets it in English, the church will be edified. If I spoke in English, the church will be edified. But the, the church has to understand. You cannot get edified without understanding what is being spoken. Edification means to learn. It means to learn. That's what it means to edify. Yeah, well, you can look it up in the dictionary. Did, did you hear what yes, I sir. said, though? Was uh, listening wait, to not, me not, carefully. Wait, wait, sir, sir I, 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 I allowed you to speak. I need you to give me my time. Please, but I love you. I just need, I just need my time to get that out, and then you can say anything after that. I promise you. Um, just remember what you were about to say. Don't forget your thought, because it's very important. I want to hear it. All right. Verse 6 says, Now, brethren... If I come unto you speaking with tongues or languages, what shall I profit you? You see? He's pretty much saying, what is it, what is it going to do for you if I spoke in another language? It does nothing for you. Well, remember, he said it, unless he interprets it. But check this out. What shall it profit you except I speak to you either by revelation or by knowledge? You see? To be knowledgeable. He wants us to be knowledgeable, not ignorant. Or by prophesying, preaching, that's the same as preaching. Or by doctrine, the teachings of the church, the teachings of Christ. Verse 7, and even these, even things without light given sound, whether pipe or harp, except they be giving distinctions in the sound, how shall it be known what is pipe or harp? He's pretty much saying if you, if you're playing the piano and it sounds like a guitar, how, how would somebody know what the piano you're playing? They won't know that because there's a confusion there. That's not what God wants us to use it for. And verse 8 says, If the trumpet gives an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? You see, he's discouraging this idea of speaking without interpretation. Okay? So likewise, ye, except ye utter by the tongue, ye utter means to speak, that's all it means, so likewise, ye, except ye speak, in other words, by the language, words, listen, easy to be understood. You see? How shall it be known what is spoken? Paul is just 
consideration this morning. For ye shall speak into the air. So when people are speaking these gibberish in the churches, they're speaking into the air. That's what they're doing. And verse 10 says, There are, it may be, so many kinds of voices in the world, and none of them is without signification. It's not clear. There's no significance to them. Right? Therefore, I know not the meaning of the voice. I shall be speaking in a barbarian or a foreigner. Barbarian means foreigner. And he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. I mean, he's speaking in French and not speaking. He's a, he's a speaker like a foreigner to me. I don't understand him. Verse 12. Even so ye, now he's talking to us now, for as much as ye are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that ye, seek that ye excel to edify. You see, it's about the edifying of the church. Not about yourself, but the church. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he interprets. Very important to put the two together for the edification of the church. Verse 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. You see that? My understanding here, people think that it's talking about Paul's mind. It's not Paul's mind that's not, is unfruitful. It's the understanding of his language is unfruitful to the listeners. He said, for if I pray in a tongue that's not understood, yeah, I could be praying spiritually. Because I'm, I'm speaking in my language. But if the people are not getting it, the understanding is unfruitful. And it says here, for this is it then. I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with the understanding also. In other words, I'll pray spiritually, but I'll make sure that my pray, my pray in, a, in a language which is understand by people. I will also sing this way as well. He's saying, I will sing with the Spirit, and I will sing with the understanding also. Else, when thou shalt bless with the Spirit... How shall he uh, occupy the room of the unlearned and say amen? He can't say amen after that prayer. He don't understand it. And by giving thanks, seeing that he understandeth not what thou sayest. For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. Somebody's not being edified. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. No, I can speak more than one language like Brother Jamal just said. Yet, you listen to this, but yet, in the church, I had rather speak five words with my understanding. In other words, I could speak five words that's clearly understood, that by my voice I might teach others, being edified, than 10,000 words, and gibberish pretty much, in an unknown tongue. And it later on says that God is not the author of confusion. So this is something that is very meaningful to me, and that's why this is against what's going on in the churches these days. That's all my thing for now. Uh, some strong statements right there, my brother. All right. <laughs> wow. Um, that's I have a, a few that's callers God, out that's here. That's God's word. That's God's word. No doubt, no doubt. I have a few callers out here. Um, anyone that wants to chime in on this conversation is, uh, you know, you can press one and we'll, uh, you know, have you say a few comments or, you know, if you have a question, just, uh, you know, say the question. The number is 877 280 Nine six eight one. That's eight seven seven two eight zero ninety six eighty one. Um, Jamal, do you want to you know rebuttal after that, or want to move on to the next topic? Let's move on to the next topic. All right. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, it's more well, than I don't, you know, I don't have nothing to say back behind that. But you know, um, the Bible tells me, you know, that when when there's not a full understanding of certain things, not to go any deeper than that. Yeah, no. no doubt. Mm-hmm. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. All right, well, let's move on to the next topic then. Um, Sunday Law. Um, I read a book recently about the Sunday Law, you know, things that's going to happen, I guess, in the future or whatnot. Um, I know the Seventh-day Adventists um, subscribe to the Sunday Law. Could you make clarity on the Sunday Law, uh, uh, Stanley, what the Sunday Law situation is all about? Um, it pretty much is um, taken out of the book of Revelation, pretty much. And, a book, and of course, I'm occupied with the book of Daniel and other of, of, of the prophets of the scriptures. Um, it pretty much um, indicates um, that the, um, the people will be having the mark 
there's going to be um, a group of people that's going to have the mark of God, which is his name written in their foreheads, and there's going to be another group of people that have the mark of the beast. But the first step is you have to find out who the beast is and know what his mark is. If you can find out who the beast is, then you'll know, and know what his mark is, then you'll know what the law he's going to try to provide. The, the beast is mentioned also in Daniel as the, the little horn power. And the scripture says that the little horn power will seek to change time and laws. And if you, um, according to the, the, the history of the scriptures of Daniel, um, you will realize it leads up to from Babylon all the way to Rome. And then in Rome, a little horn came out of there. A horn means nation. A horn means a nation. So a horn of a horn means a small nation of a, of a nation. Um, the, the, um, the, only, the only little horn or the little nation that came out of Rome that was diverse from the others was, uh, the, that was Vatican City, pretty much. That's the, um, the church of the, the, Catholic, the Catholic Church. But, and, and if you look at the study of the Catholic Church, the Catholic Church, the scripture says that that little horn will be persecuting the saints. You read that in Daniel 7, you read it in Daniel 8, you also read it in um, Revelation chapter, third, four, um, chapter um, 13, chapter 13 as well. And it says it will be seeking to, um, to, to um, harm the saints for um, 42 months. It says it in, in Revelation 13. It'll say that it says it says time and time in the dividing of time. Um, seven times in scripture, um, two in Daniel and, and, and the others are in Revelation. And um, also it says 1,260 days. But days in prophetic years, um, prophetic time is years. So, they, so, so pretty much the only thing uh, that pretty much commemorate that time period was the Dark Ages, which began in 538 A.D. and it ended in 1798 A.D. So, um, so then that is exactly 1,260 years, and at that time it was called the Inquisition, and that's when the Catholic Church were persecuting the saints because they were not following the, 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 the papal church. They were uh, pretty much protesting against the papal church. That's where they ran to a lot of a lot of people flee for religious freedom to America. But um, so now, with that said, the times and laws that one of the things that he changed, like like Jamal said earlier, when we discussed in the Sabbath topic, was that the Constantine, which was the Catholic emperor, he changed the times and the laws, which is part, part, partly one of the um, the prophecy being fulfilled in Scripture, and. And that law had caught a deadly wound by the, by the scripture says in Revelation 13. And eventually it'll come back again because they're going to be able to build an image. The second beast will build an image to the church. And pretty much he'll, his deadly wound will be healed. So when the Catholic Church comes back again in its, in, in its strength, the way it was from back in what, what, the way it was during the Dark Ages, it'll be a worldly empire once again. And uh, it's going to force a Sunday law. Um, to get people to keep the mark of the beast because the Catholic Church themselves said that the, the changing, all the changes that they did biblically was one thing, but when they changed the Sabbath to Sunday, that was their mark of their ecclesiastical power. So that is the mark of the Catholic Church. That is also the mark of the beast. So then when... When that change is made by law to the entire world, it'll be a worldwide influence. And when that happens, those that receive that mark will have a curse upon them. But we're not talking about now. It hasn't happened now. It's happening slowly because the European Union has already been told by the Pope that he wants Europe to keep all Sunday holy. He's already starting in Europe. So if this is something that's happening slowly but surely and prophecy is being fulfilled. As we said it before, even the Pope even mentioned those things about restarting it again. This has been stated um, by the Seventh-day Adventist movement um, eight, since 1800. Since 1800 and, um, and, and six, in the 1860s, we've been, we've been stating this, that was going to happen already. So this is so this is a, a pretty much um, a consistent basis, and you see it's, it's happening slowly but surely. Okay, okay. Um, what about you, Brother Jamal? What is your uh, interpretation of this? Did you, have you ever read that book, uh, the whole Sunday Law? Um, 
you know, situation that's supposed to be coming to the world and stuff like that. Have you ever um, uh, understood that uh, doctrine about Sunday law? Yeah, I've, I've read about that. Yeah, so do you agree with everything uh, Robert Stanley is saying that that's, that's going to be coming, the, the prophecies of, uh, you know, can't buy or sell and stuff like that? Yeah, I read that, you know, some of that, you know, comes from, you know, what's considered as sola scriptura, you know, the doctrine of sola scriptura. And um, the Catholic Church and, you know, basically what it is that they, they claim to change. I read a book, and the, the, the book I read was called The Ten Commandments Twice Removed. And I believe that's a, that's a Seventh-day Adventist book. Okay. Yeah, by a person named um, Danny Shelton, Shelley Quinn. Uh-huh. And that's basically, you know, what it is that that is talking about. It's talking about, you know, the Ten Commandments. I mean, we know that there was more commandments than that, but, you know, we dwell on the Ten. And uh, because the Ten is, is dealing with, you know, humanity and the changes that the Antichrist is going to try to bring to, you know, bring to be. You know, which which he's already worked on a few of them. You know, I mean, we know that the Antichrist is, well, to be considered, you know, those who are in opposition to Israel and Judaism, you know. And we already, you know, we see who that is. You know, that's obvious, you know. They say that they have a reason to be, you know, fighting Israel, you know. But God, you know, Israel is the apple of God's eye, you know. And the only way to to change a, a people is to is to change the rules. You understand? Because if you're going by the same rules, then and somebody's trying to come up against you, you know, and you're not following the same rules, that you're in opposition. You know, I'm trying to control you. So in order for me to control you, I have to get you to change the way you think. That's right. Mm-hmm. You understand? And that's why, you know, if you, if you look at the battle that's going on, you know, the battle that's going on is between the, between what we think is natural or what we think is, you know, is unnatural. You know, you have the homosexuals, you have the lesbians, you know, and, and they're saying that they have a right, you know, to to be how they are and to do how they do, when that's in, in opposition to God's law. Now, when you say that it's in opposition to God's law, they say that it's not. You know, but God God clearly, you know, when He created Adam and Eve, He He, you know, He didn't create two men and, and two women, you know, or two men, you know, going and doing their thing and two women going and doing their thing. You know, He created a man and a female because he was trying to, to, you know, deal with the righteous lineage. Right. You know, that's one of the reasons why, you know, Jesus or Yeshua came in, you know, had to come through the, through a certain lineage, you know, after Adam and Eve dropped the ball, you know. Now, I mean, we can talk about the civilization that was here during all of that or before Adam and Eve, you know, but, you know, the, a lot of, People don't know about you know these kind of things, so I'm not you know going to bring that into you know into mm-hmm. the conversation. You know okay. that it takes it takes reading and studying. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now this, okay. you know I'm I mean I'm I'm uh, you know we we know you know about all the all the different leaders that we've had go before us. You know, and they talked about this stuff. You know. Now, when I first when I first started learning about the Book of Daniel and the Book of Revelations, you know, it was kind of a scary book to me, you know, in the beginning, you know, until I started understanding that this is God's love, you know, and mm-hmm. what the Scripture tells us tells us that warning comes before destruction, you know. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, we, you know, like I said, the Antichrist. It's not a, you know, we think that it's a person. You know, but it's it's more than a person. You know, it's it's because everything that is in this or that comes into this natural has to come from a spiritual source. Right. You understand. 
And, I mean, look at the hatred that a lot of these nations have against Israel, you know. And, and Israel as in a whole, you know, Israel, Judah, you know, and and we're from that. You know, right. that's one of the reasons why, you know, we've, our ancestors were, you know, came through slavery and, and captivity. You know, we were birthed through captivity, you know. Yeah. Now, you know, we, like I said, you know, in, in understanding that, you know, we have to realize what our position is in all of this. You know, one of the things is, is that, you know, one of the things that Jesus said was that if he's not, you know, if he's not against us, he's for us. You know, because there was a scripture in the, in the New Testament where a person was casting out demons, you know, and the disciples got upset, you know. And Jesus turned to him. He was like, you know, they that they that are with us are with us. And, you know, trying to let them know, yo, if they're doing the same thing we're doing, you know, obviously they're with us, you know. Now, I mean, that I'm saying that because, you know, I'm like I said, I'm not really into debates unless what is being said is not truth, you know. And it may be, it may not be the truth, but it can be a truth, you know. And a truth meaning it's true to the person who's saying it, you know. Whether whether it was taught to them by someone else, or it was a, you know something that was a learned behavior, you know, most of what I what I deal with is is you know truth that is not just my truth, you know, but through you know me sitting down and dialoguing with with others that have had the, almost the same experience, you know, ducks you know they can't sit with eagles and, and have a conversation because you know they don't know what eagles how how high eagles fly, you know what eagle sees on his journey, you know. Okay. And the eagles can't say much much to the ducks, you know, except you know when we flying high we see you down low, <laughs> you know. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So they're they're never going to come to a complete head except talking about flying, you know. That's where uh-huh. you can get them to agree, you know, okay. and. You know, I be care- I, I like to be careful when when you know when when getting into certain debates because I know about the enemy, you know, and his job mm-hmm. is to kill, steal, and destroy. destroy. You know, I focus on those three things. You know, mm-hmm. what does he kill, steal, and destroy? Anything that he can get on get his hands into. You know. Mm-hmm. Now, let's say me and me and this other brother, we was good friends. You know, mm-hmm. and I'm a I'm a heavy Pentecostal. You know, and he's he's you know Seventh Day Adventist like he is, you know, and we start talking religion, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What would what would happen is a right. conflict and a confusion, you know. Right. Now he would he's going to think that he's right, and I'm going to think that I'm right. Mm-hmm. Now, depending, you know, the, that's why the scripture lets us know, you know, how can two walk together unless they agree, you know. So there has to come some kind of an agreement, you know, regardless of, you know, when when the Sabbath day is and, you know, all this other stuff. There is an enemy, you know, that is out here ravaging all of our communities, all of our churches, you know, not just the Pentecostal church, not just the Seventh-day Adventist church, not just the Baptist church, but he's ruining all of us, you know. And And I believe that this is what God is really concerned about, you know. He's concerned about the soul of us, of us men. You know, are we going to get the point? You know, or are we going to keep flowing out, you know? Or will you speak in tongues? Will I speak more tongues than you? Or I don't speak in tongues. I don't believe in that. And it's all right, you know, because at the end of, of, of the situation, like I said, there's an enemy, you know, and he's not looking to see, you know, he's not saying, okay, well, we ain't going to mess with the Seventh-day Adventists, you know. Because they're cool, you know, or we ain't going to mess with the Baptists because they're all right, you know, but he's coming after all of us. When it says church, they mean every church, you know. Right. Storefront, big church, little church, you know, mega church, they're coming after the church as a whole, you know. I I, I chose to take this, you know, to talk, but, you know, like I said, I look at the weightier matters. You know, and I pray pray that that you know everybody else start looking at the weightier matters. 
You know, we could talk about the Antichrist, you know, but what are we doing to, to you know, try to stop him? You know, Scripture does say that if my people are called by my name to humble themselves and turn from their wicked ways, then will they hear from heaven. Then will, will he heal our land? You know, this is what I'm into, you know. All right, all right. Well, we only have a few more, like, four minutes left. On the show, I see we have a few listeners, um, you know, they, uh, online and stuff. Stanley, uh, is there anything you want to add to the conversation, or do you want to move on to? Yeah, um, well, you said you only have four minutes left. You have yeah, only four minutes there. left. Yeah, we're about to close in a few, so I'm gonna give you the closing statements, I guess. Uh, uh, okay, okay, not a problem. Um, well, pretty much, um, for the most part, um, everything that Jamal said, I, I, I talked to Jamal, so I, I agree with practically almost everything he just stated there. Um, we definitely have to, to focus on the way that matters with the law, which is love. We have to love one another. When we teach, when we're teaching these information, that um, we have to make sure that the love of Christ is in our hearts when we're doing it, because without that, um, the message is, again, it's going to sound like brass, tingling cymbals and things like that. You know, mm-hmm. um, so um, I definitely agree with that. Um, and, um, and I agree also that, partially agree also, um, that if a heavy Pentecostal is talking to a, a heavy Seventh Day Adventist, um, yes, there can be confusion, but maybe not. Um, I believe there's also the possibility that one may realize that they are not following the truth, and one may say, you know what, Pastor Jamal, you're right. Um, Pastor, you're right. I mean, this is scriptural, and if I'm a Christian, I'm deciding to follow Scripture. That's what I'm going to do. I mean. They had, they had heavy conf- they had heavy conflicts in the days of Christ too. So, um, the 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 G- Christ um, Christ apostles had a message. The Pharisees had a message. The Sadducees had a message. The Sings yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, had a message too. You know, yeah. Wait, hold on. I hear some noise in the background. Anyway, and they all had a message, but that didn't stop them from discussing the topic. They didn't stop them from doing that. So. Um, so even if there was confusion, it doesn't necessarily mean that God's work is not being done. You know, um, I, I really believe that um, as we're speaking here, there are people that are listening. And there are a lot of them that are really being blessed. They're probably hearing certain things they never heard before. They're hearing um, certain views of the scripture they never heard before. And that's a blessing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, 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 not to, it's, only, it's not narrowed down to just me and Pastor Jamal speaking now. It's, it's, it's the listeners that are listening to this. They're being blessed by this. They're going, wow, you know, i never Amen. seen this scripture. i never seen this. Praise the Lord. That's, I never thought about the scripture like that. Oh, all of a sudden I always thought it said go, but it's really it. Oh, so it's a lot of things that people are listening. When they look these information up, they start realizing. So, you know, it's very important for us to, um, to do these things so that people can hear it. You know, when Jesus was talking to the Sadducees, there was conflict there. But the people that were listening, they were astound, astonished when Christ responded to them. It's because he was right. It's because he was telling the truth. But the mm-hmm. others were, they had spirit of error. So, I mean, yes, I, I can get to the idea that, you know, this person thinks he's right, that person thinks he's right. So let's just forget about the, what we differ and then we can just all agree. If that's the case, then we should be um, advocating, um, we should be okay with walking church, with churches that that promotes homosexuality, that promotes all, we're just, like, don't, just ignore homosexuals, don't talk about homosexuals right now. Let's just focus on what we do agree with. I mean, if we do that, um, then there's going to be, um, it's like going to a supermarket and looking at, uh, trying to find a particular cereal box, and they all have one box, black and white box, they all look the same, and it all says cereal. Cereal, cereal, cereal. You don't even know what is what. You open this one, it's Cracker Jack. You open the other one, there's this one. You open that one, there's Kicks. You have to open up 50 different boxes to find the one you want. Why? Because a, that's confusion. There's a reason why things are denominated, so that we can know exactly what we want, what this church teaches. Yeah, Brother church Stanley, teaches Brother, Stanley Brother Stanley, I'm sorry, i got to interrupt you. Oh, not man, a problem, not a problem, not a problem. A couple seconds left. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> it's been a pleasure, it's a pleasure. I'd like to thank my special guests, and, you know, definitely a blessing, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. All right, God bless. All right, be blessed.